All right. <clears throat> Hope everyone had a good weekend. What's up, Mikey? All right, so we got ONVO. This one's those top of the gap scams. Actually, looks like SNGX is taking it, taking the first place here for the top of the gap scan. <clears throat> uh, but ONVO looks like phase two results. Let's see here. Announces positive phase two results. Study subjects receiving the drug achieved statistically significant reduction in liver fat content from baseline. So phase two results um, could be pretty decent. So I definitely want to keep this one on watch. Hopefully we can base out on this uh, previous uh, resistance, which is now support. Hopefully we can base out in this area at minimum and then start to curl up or maybe another surge higher hopefully hopefully then we can capture some of that we can take a look at the daily and the dilution tracker <clears throat> happy monday getting over the pdt this week so excited yeah pdt that's nice 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 you'll be able to get that uh, settlement margin and trade big size as much as you like but always um what you should do is keep your you should treat the twenty five thousand as if you don't even have it so only be risking any money you have over the twenty five thousand which is what i had so whenever i came down to twenty five thousand it would be like i have zero dollars in my account and then maybe i throw in like five hundred bucks and i'd only be trading and risking that five hundred dollars maybe i'd take a trade of a couple thousand dollar trade but i'm only risking Let's say like a hundred bucks and then I try to build that up. And then once I have a nice $2,000 cushion, let's say of 27,000, then you have a little bit more room to kind of take a little bit more risk. So you don't go look, go below that PDT and then you grow that a little bit more and then you have 5,000 and then you have a lot more um, room to kind of take a little bit more risk. And then it starts to really get into a big snowball effect. But uh, yeah, don't don't you shouldn't be risking more than that twenty five thousand, just so you don't go back under PDT. But ONVO, uh, let's see what were we, what did we say we were gonna do? Check the daily. So daily chart two hundred five looks like it's gonna be a level. I think OMB, I think we're gonna at least try to attempt that. 205 level which is going to be nice looks like we're finding that support that I was saying nice strong green candle there pretty nasty backside but I think we're gonna at least try to attempt to should be ideal There's going to be a lot of resistance on this. Yeah, this is pretty nasty. I doubt it. We're even going to get to the no way we up here. No way. No way. I think, I think this will be lucky to get the two bucks, to be honest with you. Just the daily chart is just... There's just a lot of overhead resistance. And what I mean by that is just like the trend to the downside has just been continuing for so long that any pop that this thing gets, it just gets sold into. Any pop, it just gets sold into. And it can't hold highs and then continue higher. Every pop sold into, pop sold into, pop sold into, pop sold into. So, you know, previous, previous um, history forms future trends is usually what we look at on the daily chart 
previous history forming future trends. So the statistics of this doing the same exact thing that it has been doing over and over again is pretty high. So this is exactly why, you know, we looked at the daily chart. And, you know, the overall trend is, is backside. So we'll see how long this can, how, how long this can continue higher from here. The next on the scans, SNGX. This one's a penny stock. Some of you guys who like to trade penny stocks. This one's pretty beaten down as well. We're at uh, 70 cents or something like that. 65. 75 at the ties. So up in here. So we're like up in this area. So maybe break of this pivot. And then maybe it looking for obviously you have that one dollar as the psychological level I don't really need to put a, a line there because I can just see that on the chart but I'm not gonna be able to see the nineteen dollar level it's very specific I mean this has been made a move before we had this day here back in November Ripping from what 30 40 cents all the way up to two bucks, not too bad, not too bad of a move. We can take a look at the news. Thankfully, I got some tax money, put some tax money in, so I have a nice cushion, but still going to be cautious. Yeah, good. Yeah, eventually, you'll be paying into the tax, you'll be paying your tax money versus getting a refund. So Every trader is paying to the tax man instead of getting a refund. So you're going to be getting used to that. Um, and by the way, if you if you do, um, you have to look into uh, for next year, for anyone who's trading, look into if you're required to do quarterly payments because this year is in the first year, 2024 is going to be the first year I had to make quarterly payments. And the quarterly payment is due today. I already, I already paid it, but um, if I didn't do research on that, I would have been getting penalized. But yeah, and something like if you anticipate paying more than a thousand dollars in taxes, um, you'll get dinged for not paying quarterly payments. But there's also like stipulations, like if you had, if you've already paid your yet last year's tax, then through withdrawal or through uh, withholding, then you're you're not subject to the penalty. And then it's also like if you already paid ninety percent of it at least, you have to pay at least estimated ninety percent in your withholding to avoid the penalty. But yeah, you just definitely research that if you're starting to make money trading, just so you don't get penalized. Because they'll they'll charge you for interest for months and months and months, and then you'll get like a flat fee. Okay, so SNGX, let's take a look here at the news here. SNGX. FDA grants the drug, it's an orphan drug, selling an orphan drug. What does that mean? Designation to active ingredient in Marvax for prevention and post exposure prophylaxis against Marbug, Mar, Marbug virus infection. So is, it, is this even English? So it gets drug designation from US FDA. Yeah, I mean, it is news. It is news. Let's take a look at the floats for these two stocks here. Volume ain't too bad pre market here. Ten million share float on SNGX with a sub dollar price, which is you know it's gonna only need like seven million dollars to turn the market cap and turn the float. It's really what it's looking at here. So that's not a lot. So we could see a move if the volume is hot here on SNGX.
I do like ONVO price range though a little better. I do like the price range on ONVO a little better for sure. And ONVO is in flow to 9.8 9 million, so very similar, about 10 million, 10 million. Yeah, this today, I don't know, I don't know, it doesn't seem too hot yet. I would have thought after the whole like shenanigans that was happening over the weekend, I would have thought that um, the market would be down. But looks like the fear has um, kind of went away, faded away through Saturday and Sunday. And the uh, market is up. But the overall trend here seems to be still pulling back. So I would say it's not really looking too good until you break that trend on the overall market. But we were pretty extended. <clears throat> We were pretty extended. Now, is this just going to be like one of those pullbacks on the front side and we see, you know, another curl all the way back up, like another move? Or is this going to be the start of something, you know, a little bit bigger? Who knows? Historically, the market goes up, but the market only goes up until it doesn't go up anymore and then it comes down hard. But, um, We'll see I mean is this I mean people are saying like this upcoming crash is like 10 years 15 years in culmination of this bubble that you know has to pop eventually but uh, we'll see we'll see what happens The overall trend just seems to be you know, every single dip. Just um, the trend is just buy every single dip, and you'll be making money. But I mean, these pullbacks are pretty nasty. This is what forty-seven percent, almost fifty percent on pullbacks here, like recessions. 50%. That's crazy. If you were to see a 50% recession, that's all the way down to COVID lows. That's down to there if we see a 50% recession. Which, I mean, on the weekly, you know, multi yearly chart, I mean, doesn't, like, we're still, like, made some major progress from 10 years ago or 15 years ago. And then obviously it will curl back up, but I don't want to be that guy, like, you know starting to get really aggressive up here thinking that oh market's just gonna keep going up and then get flushed on here for the next three years <clears throat> but I don't know people say that this was it you know we've already had it you know we'll just keep on trucking but um, I'm not sure if I buy it 100% I'm not sure if I buy it because it hasn't ironed out the inflation neither of these has ironed this started the inflation or or accelerated it by like 10x and this didn't do anything we jacked up rates maybe we brought inflation down from nine percent to 3.5 percent 3.6 percent and now it's still ticking back up so that means they didn't get aggressive enough with the rate hikes if they would have gotten a little bit more aggressive, maybe, you know, this pullback would have came down a little bit more. Who knows? But, you know, right now we'd be sitting on nice, you know, 2% inflation if they got more aggressive. We'd probably be curling up by now. And then, you know, we could probably have another, another nice bull run. But I don't think that's coming. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. They kind of ruined, they kind of screwed it up. Has the spy ever split? I'm actually not sure. I'm not sure actually. It's a good question. You can probably Google it. 
Usually it says down in here like there's little symbols, but there's no symbols on it. All right, so we got uh, SNGX, ONVO. Let's take a look at those other stocks we're trading last week. We had Rent. Rent is still holding. Rent is still holding. So maybe we see another attempt. Who knows? I'm going to put an alert like I did on Friday. And if I hear the alert, we are jumping over. I seem to have been doing pretty well on rent past two days on Thursday and Friday. 600 or about on average, both of those days, about you know five to 600 on Thursday and Friday. So rent has been treating me nicely. <clears throat> if we can get back over this pivot here at 23 and hold this area, then we're looking for 28, 28.90. And then we're looking for 30. But who knows? Who knows? This thing might not even get any volume. It's been a while, you know, since people have traded it. Uh, INDO, so because of the whole Iran attacks, this could be, you know, being a, this could be a mover today because since uh, Iran supplies a lot of the oil, you know, it could restrict prices and maybe the oil stocks could be coming up. Uh, so this pattern seems to be holding up not too bad. It was a little tricky to trade on Friday. It was just, it wasn't very liquid. The bids would drop out really quick. So I want to be careful of that. The bids would drop out real quick and the spread would open up 10, 15 cents or more on a $5 stock, which makes it really risky. So, you know, if there's going to be a large spread or if I can't trust the bids, I may want to leave this alone. Or if I'm going to trade at maybe small size and trying to only trade off the bid and not buying market so I can minimize that. Because if I'm buying market, I get filled on the ask, bids drop out, you know, I'm down 20, 30 cents in a $5 stock. And that's not good. So, INDO, this one has potential with the whole uh, shenanigans over in Israel and Iran. And this here, this was back in COVID. This was back in COVID or late COVID. I forget what happened here. I remember it moving up, but I was the catalyst, was the catalyst, um, Oh, okay. So I remember it was the um, it was when inflation was getting so high, and then gas prices were so high. I think I'm not sure. I forget. But I remember trading it. But I was so inexperienced still. I only made like a hundred bucks on a stock that went from one dollar to eighty six. <laughs> I could have just bought one share and held it, and would have made more. Um, ONVO. You guys like ONVO? Top of the radar. What's happening on Iran and Israel? Man, this guy's living under a rock. <laughs> yeah, apparently, well, Iran sent over some missiles because I guess Israel attacked one of their sacred bases or something like that, and I forget what they call it, but and uh, I guess under some international law, they were able to send some some missiles. 
But uh, it doesn't seem to it's go, it doesn't seem like it's going to escalate too much since um, I don't think I don't think that they're going to retaliate. But it, oil could still get affected. We'll see. And who knows? Time will only tell. And if it does start to like blow up, get super escalated, you know, the INDO, HUSA, these oil stocks are gonna fly. These things are gonna fly. And apparently they're saying that's why gold, gold was up. Gold was up because I don't know. Someone said I don't know if it's true, but someone said like Iran was just buying a crap ton of gold here and shorting Bitcoin. I don't even know if that's possible, but someone, this is off Twitter, so I don't believe everything on Twitter, but someone, someone said Iran was shorting Bitcoin and buying gold because they, they were going to launch these rockets. And they're like, oh, might as well profit off of it. You know, might as well buy gold and short Bitcoin because they knew that was going to get affected. I don't have no idea. That's a good that's a good thesis though, but yeah, this is a crazy move in gold. Like I've never seen a move like this in gold before in my entire life. This is like in what two weeks? Up like almost twenty percent. Or at least I guess you can count this because this is a pretty strong move from the low. Twenty percent in what is that? Thirty five thirty days? Something like that. Pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, 30 days, 30 bars, 30 days. That's crazy. 20% in 30 days on a commodity. This is supposed to be preserving capital. This is not like a growth stock, and it's moving like a growth stock. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, you don't buy this to, to make money. You buy this for, to preserve your money, and it's up 20% in 30 days. Definitely <laughs> not normal, but I, it's already coming back down. I mean, it's come back down pretty hard off the high. 10 points. We'll see, though. We got the we got three minutes here to the opening bell. ONVO and we have ONVO and we have SNGX. So, you know, nothing really looking that great. Nothing A plus. We'll wait for the volume. The stock with the most volume is where I'm going to be trading. And you know, I'm just looking for just to get green. And I guess you know the stock that has moving the most money is probably going to be where the trade most traders are going to be. And I want to be trading there because that's where the patterns are likely to uh, resolve. Because if nobody's watching a stock and I'm the one only one trading it. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a bull flag or a bear flag. You know, it's just there's, there's no volume, there's no volume, and um, it's just going to be choppy. So that's the plan here for the open. If you guys are still watching, hit that thumbs up button for me on the way out. And if you're new, consider subscribing. Love to have you part of the community. And I will catch you guys later on the recap. All right, good luck. Stay calm, cool, and collected, and disciplined. Doesn't seem like it's going to be a super hot day, but be ready for anything.